Have you been waiting for Jamel Hill? Oh, man. I cannot believe it's 2020. I cannot believe we're 30 episodes into this podcast. And Jamel Hill, Nazi Germany, those words are actually being thrown out there. I hope there's a day where Nazi Germany is not brought up on my podcast because people just quit talking about it. Jamel Hill, let me read the tweet. I'll show it as well or something like that. Jamel Hill says, been reading Isabel Wilkerson's new book, Cast. And if you were of that opinion that the United States wasn't nearly as bad as Nazi Germany, how wrong you are. Can't encourage you enough to read this masterpiece. Whoops. Whoopsie. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We made a mistake. And y'all know the mistake, right? Y'all know the mistake. The mistake is, as we talked about earlier in the show, you do not, you do not compare anything to Nazi Germany or the Holocaust, especially not the United States. Now, Jamel Hill, well, uh, first of all, let's try and let's try and define the book, and then we'll define what she's talking about, and then we'll slaughter this whole um, argument. So, the book is about the or kind of references the caste system in India. So India has a caste system, which is like a social, kind of like a social pyramid where different levels of the pyramid get different social benefits. I'm not going to go through the whole caste system. I'm not going to go through the whole book uh, because we're on, we're on a time crunch. But that was the system in India. So I think the last, I think the bottom is called the delete or dilute, or something like that, D- delete. My my Indian my Indian history I haven't I haven't brushed up on my Indian history recently but I'm pretty sure they're called the delete or dilute and uh, or detail something like that. Anyways, those people have like the worst jobs. Those people are placed in the worst positions, the worst jobs, and a lot of them are not allowed to go into like churches or, or businesses or houses or whatever, and they're treated like lepers. They were they were called the untouchables. And then the untouchables was changed into whatever this D word is. I can't, I can't think of right now. But that's the idea, the basis for the book. So then the book explores kind of the undefined caste system in like America. The undefined caste system in America is obviously like segregation and stuff like that. We're not outright saying there's a caste system, but with segregation, we are saying you know, African Americans weren't allowed to drink from the same fountains as whites. African Americans weren't allowed to vote. Women weren't allowed to vote. So there was there was an unidentified caste system. Okay, sure. Okay, I'm there. And then the book gives examples of that in America. This is fine. Like I have, I you know, we we the books like that I think are great. I think it's so great to go back and look at history and look at look at societal situations to define them to figure out what was wrong with them and to learn from them so we don't make the mistake again a hundred percent i may even order this book it sounds very interesting i'm there i'm there right now a problem is the jamel is insinuating that nazis and or nazi germany learned how to be nazis from america that's her defense. What she's saying is, or in her defense tweets, she says, I wasn't comparing the current United States to Nazi Germany. I was comparing different times in American history to the same ideals as Nazi Germany. And she talks about Nazi Germany studying America to kind of formulate its plan. Now, is that true? Yes, it is true. It is true. But it's true in a very specific, in a very specific way. Now, again, I have to... Uh, you know, again, we're on the fly here, and I have to re up on my Nazi Germany history and my you know Jim Crow history and all that stuff. But as far as I know, and as far as I know, as you know, is uh, more than likely right. But as far as I know, yes, Nazi lawyers were sent to study uh, in certain things with racial injustice in America. Those things were they were interested in how America segregated African Americans, but it wasn't deemed enough for Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany didn't want to just segregate. They wanted to pretty much eliminate. So they actually didn't use 
what um, a lot of the Jim Crow laws were as far as like segregation. They it was it was not far enough for uh, African American or for Nazi Germany. What Nazi Germany did take and what they were very interested in was how America basically kept Native Americans and Filipinos in the country, but did not look at them as citizens. They were, uh, I think, what were they called, nationalists or something like that? But that's what they were interested in. So then what happened was, another the, the biggest part, I guess this is part of Jim Crow, but another thing that they were very interested in was the idea of illegal interracial marriages. And in America at the time, it was something like, I don't know, 75% of the states, interracial marriage was illegal. And how America did it, it was called like the one drop rule, I think it was, or something like that, where if you had any lineage, any African-American in you, you were legally African-American. And you were, you lost all your all your rights. Nazi Germany deemed that too strong, and because you know, I mean, if you have, uh, it's a lot more difficult if you have a Jewish, you know, a Jewish person uh, marrying a German person. They have offspring. How do you tell if the offspring? Very difficult, right? It's much more difficult in that situation. So they deemed the one drop rule was way too strict. So then Nazi Germany implemented, I believe it was three grandparents. I think if you had three grandparents who were Jewish, you were Jewish. And, and then that's how, they, that's how they decided who couldn't marry who. And that's how they did their interracial thing. So, yes, Nazi Germany did study some very specific rules that America had regarding racial injustice. That is true. That's 100% correct. I mean, you know, history is history. Some of the stuff they used, some of the stuff they didn't use, some of the stuff they thought was not that bad, some of the stuff they did think they did think was bad. And it's important to remember, too, at that time, segregation and race in general was a really weird spot, especially in America. I mean, Nazi or Nazism wasn't immediately rejected in America, even when we were fighting in the war. It wasn't really until we got into the World War where Nazism was really kind of pushed back on. I mean, the whole idea of like a pure race and all that stuff, keeping your race pure, keeping everything separate, that was pretty much okay in America and, and all that. That that was kind of like, okay, I can kind of see what you're thinking there, whatever. It wasn't until they got into the genocide and they got into the ethnic cleansing that it really started to say, all right, we need to push back against this. So very, 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 it's a time where you, there's a lot happening. And, you know, you, you got to go back and you got to do your history. You got to read, you got to do your research. So what, you know, what Jamel Hill was saying, or what I guess she was trying to say, or I'm, I'm, I'm giving her a lot of credit here, but what she was trying to say is not crazy. It's not far off. You know, the idea that like, hey, look guys, we had some ideals in this country that Nazi Germany thought were either too strict, like the interracial, like the deciding what race you are. They either thought it was too strict or not strict enough. And we did, in a way, kind of attribute to some of the laws that they ended up passing. Like that stuff, okay, sure, fine. You know, okay, sure, yeah, it's good to know that. And just like the Indian uh, caste system, like I'm pretty sure that still stands to this day, where that's a thing that they fight over there. And if it isn't today, then it's been recently. So it, it is, of course, it's okay to know those things. And of course, it is okay to understand kind of how things moved around. And, you know, if you don't know about Jim Crow laws or if you don't know, you know, some people may not even know that interracial marriage was illegal in the United States. Like, that's all fine. But to compare a time in the United States with, the, with Nazi Germany and the Holocaust, in my opinion, and I'm not Jewish, you know, like I don't have a direct line to this thing but in my opinion the nazi germany regime and the holocaust were and are the lowest point in human history nazi germany and what happened there what happened to the concentration camps are it, it is just unspeakable horrors and to think about the concentration camps with people being you know relegated to a number that was tattooed on their body 
their silver and gold teeth ripped out and smelted and they had to work and they were starved and babies were murdered and you know their friends and family were killed in front of them and they were sent to gas chambers and burned and yeah i mean it, it, it's none of that is comparable to any anything and, and, and you know that's not even and comparison is the worst like, i i don't i don't like comparing at all even even in our current landscape, people comparing lives, and that's why Instagram is so dangerous. Instagram is so dangerous because it breeds comparison, and comparison and jealousy are the root of, of unhappiness. But you know, when you start comparing things, like that doesn't lessen what was happening here, right? It's not like, oh, well, we had segregation. It's like, yeah, well, we had gas chambers. It's like, this is the, this is not a game you want to win. You know, it's it's it should not be a comparison. And that's why people. That's why I always say that people that do compare Nazi Germany and the Holocaust, they just lose, because they've lost the plot. They've lost the ability to reason. They've lost critical thinking. They've lost uh, any of that. So they have no interest in facts. They have no interest in hi- historical relevance. All they want to do is amplify their voice, and they want to amplify whatever point they're trying to make. And that's the ultimate hail mary: is to take the the pinnacle of evil and the pinnacle of pure depravity and to use that to amplify your cause is as selfish and irresponsible as it gets unfortunately jamel hill does have a platform and she does have followers she doesn't she does catch a paycheck for her thoughts so the fact that she can say something so irresponsible as that and again she'll defend herself she'll say oh well i was talking about you know this historical time where Nazis studied what was going on in America. It's like, okay, well, that, I mean, you, that's right. But what you did with the fact, what you did with, with what you read, that what you did with what was correct, and then you transformed it into your statement, that was wrong. 